Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm, take two. I'm Christy. So today I'm working on a project and I thought it'd be fun to um, kind of do a little tutorial for Tori. Uh, I have this that was in my stash. Don't remember what I used it for, where it came from, where I got it. And then, oh, I won't spill my coffee. I have this, this rusty old thing and it's not really rusty the problem is, is that the paint is wearing off of the coating thing and i need an ottoman where i sit i don't have like a footstool i can't afford a recliner right now so i decided i'm going to make one this is this turned upside down is about the perfect height i'm going to make up for it being just a little low by putting a pillow top kind of thing in it so i cut my pieces last night, um, I literally drew around that on the fabric, drew around the bottom, and the bottom is going to be the top, so, um, yeah. Then I cut my pieces, I'm going to put a zipper in. Now, the zipper I also found in my stash, I'm hoping that I can maybe find a pillow form and be the only money that I have in this, but if I can't, I have a bag of polyfill already in my stash. <coughs> so basically, I'm going to uh, put the zipper in. And then I was going to just do a wrap around skirt, but I realized that the, um, the pattern didn't go the right way. So I ended up cutting four pieces and I have all of the sides done and pinned together. And again, literally, I laid those down on this, and I drew, and then I cut them. So, and I have a little scrap, which I don't know what it came from. Um, anyway, so it basically is going to be a big pillow with a long thing. And I, if I have to, I am going to put elastic around the bottom and tuck it up underneath the bottom so that it'll um, look nicer. I don't know that I'm going to need that because I'm really going to try and make it form fitted so that it just slides down over and it'll just have the fabric um yes i probably should wrap this in batting i don't have batting i don't have the money to go out and put into this i just did eleven hundred dollars worth of work on my car um i had to do my eye exam and the vet i had a, a couple of vet unexpected vet appointments so we're talking right there almost two thousand dollars I don't really have the money to go and spend. So if I can do this without the batting, I'm going to. But in the end, if I need to go get batting, I will. Again, batting in a pillow form would be the only thing that I put in this, but I'm really going to try not to do that. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have my top and push a string. I'm going to go over, I've laid my zipper out so that I can uh, right sides facing. I'm going to go and I'm going to run a seam along here. Then I'm going to press it all down, run a top stitch there, and I'm going to put this one along here, and then I'm going to seam it all down. And I'll come back when I get that done. Okay, so I've got my uh, zipper in. And I took time to iron this. So I don't have to make sure that this is on the edge, in the middle. If I put a form in it, it'll just be what it is. If I stuff it, I'm literally just going to open it up and start shoving it in and then zip it. So this does not have to be on the seam. So there were two little faded marks right here. And so to hide them, I just, and this material is super old, okay? So to hide them, I just uh, folded on those and then ironed it, and this is gonna be my top. So the actual top is gonna look like this. Now, I did take time to press, and no, I haven't done these because you'll see why here in a minute. Um, I pressed a long and short piece, and a long and short piece, and I made sure that my design is all facing the same way. That was the whole point of doing these this way is because I wanted the design 
to go up and down. So I'm going to take these over to the machine and I'm only going to press uh, so one seam together each one. So give me just a minute and I'll come back when that's done. Okay, so I seamed a long and a short together and then I press the seam open. Now there's a reason that I'm doing that. Um, I did two of them and there's probably an easier way. But this piece I have measured more than once. I know that's exactly the size I need. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to literally line up this seam with this seam. And I'm going to pin this. And then you'll see that I might have a little overlap. I might have a little, you know, I want the seams to match and the points so that when I go like this, see this one's got a little overlap and I may have just put the short side on the short. Oh, and I think I just did the wrong way. That's par for the course, isn't it? Okay, so I put the short end. So I'm gonna start with this corner <laughs> and I am going to line this up and we will go from there. Um, once I get this all seamed together, like I like it, I will be uh, searching these. So anyway, I'm going to do this side, then I'm going to line up this side. And that way I will have a chance to um, What do you call it? Uh, make these fitted more, I guess you'd say, because I want the uh, I want it to be fitted first off. But I, where these two seams are not seamed together when I'm joining this, I will have some adjustment and play in them uh, as to where everything goes. So I'm hoping that that is the case. So I will do this and then I have a little adjustment on this side. Then I'm going to put this other side right here and go like so. And so it and then as you see I have this little bit of an overlap here that I can adjust when I seam it to that other side. So and each corner will have that. So if I'm off a little bit, I can make it a little bit looser. So, all right, I am going to pin these and go make my top seams and I'll be back. Okay, so I've got my two sides done. I, I've seamed this one together first and then I went ahead and attached them to the top. Like I said, leaving the two sides here open. Now, this, I'm going to take my thing and I am going to fit it. And the last step is to pin the, there we go, is to pin, and see this fits very nicely. It will fit a little bit better when it gets that hook in it. And I have strings. I'm going to go around and serge it. But now I can pin these exactly where I need them for the look that I want. So this side is all nice and pretty. I can pull it, you know, taut. I can do it. And so literally I'm just going to go along here. And I do want it kind of form fitted, but not totally form fitted if that makes sense. And I'm just gonna kind of put me a pin right in here because this is where I want it. And these are just for markers. I still I have to do it on the outside. I have to flip it, you know, and do the seam all out and all that. And when I get done this top will be all puffy. I have to hem it. That's why I'm not worried about what's down here. 
Um, I still have to hem it. But basically, I'm going to kind of, that's kind of, I don't want it really taut, but I don't want it really, I don't want people to see that that's a crate in there, okay? And if I do decide to go and get some batting, I want it to be nice. Uh, I want it to fit comfortably. I don't want to have to struggle with it and tear the whole thing apart to get it in there. All right, so I've got these kind of marked. <clears throat> and this is very crooked. So I don't have it really marked. There we go. Okay. That's too much. Right. And you do want to make sure that your pattern is straight. And oh no. So I'm going to have to rip this out because I put one of the sides on upside down. If you look, these little rooster tails are supposed to be pointing up. This side and this side are. This side and this side are down. So I've got to rip this seam out, flip it over, and then I'll come back to it in real life. Just so sweet. Okay, I'm back and I fixed my directional issue. Oh, hands. Excuse me. All right. So. go. All right. Now, I know that people say I should serge this as I'm going. I want to have all these strings because this is going to fry. I will serge this on the edges when I get done. There are two times that I don't use the serger right off. Okay. And I'm going to tell you while I pin these and fit these because you've already seen this part. Just a replay. Um, so there's two times when I don't just use the serger right off the bat, okay? First is if I am creating something that I am not sure is going to work, um, meaning I'm winging it. I don't know if the pieces are going to come together right. I don't know, you know, if it's going to fit right. Um, all of those times, I absolutely will not surge a project, okay? And that is because it takes a lot of ripping out and you waste more thread ripping out surging than you do ripping out those two seams that I just did. So, yeah, that it just surging, ripping it out surging is number one, not fun. Um, I haven't ever found a perfect way to do it and all the little gimmicks and do it like this and pull one thread and it comes out. No, I haven't ever figured that part out. Okay, so I end up ripping it. Yeah, the old fashioned way. Anyway, so I don't do that. The other time um, is if it's directional like this. I always inadvertently do one upside down. Don't ask me why. I've just, you know, but when I'm setting it, like I do pretty sides together. When I look at the one, I put it like the one instead of flipping it the other way, flipping it up so that when you flip it down, it's the right directional. So I'll get this one um, upside down or the other one upside down. One will always be right. I don't know what my deal is, but I probably should check twice and so once, but it happens. And again, it is less thread to take out the two seams that I messed up than it is to take out those two seams surged. So, all right, I've got this fitted. I am going to turn this inside out and you know, I just thought of it. I probably should have done it inside out because then I wouldn't have turned it inside out and do my pins. Huh. Since it didn't take me that long to do it, we will just take those pins out and I will do it from the inside. Great thinking, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just 
goofy, okay? But if I do set this up like this, I don't know if I turn this the right way, um, then it would already be pinned. So, okay, little key there. Maybe we should pin it from the inside. I've never made a, a uh, milk carton into an ottoman before, so my apologies. And I'm not going to make two or three of these projects to make, you know, I know people do that. They'll make one and make it all perfect and get all their um, oopsies over with. And no offense, I don't need two ottomans, first off. And second off, creating this one is enough for me. Thank you. <laughs> it just, yeah, I, I'm just, what would I do if I had to make another cube um, cover? First thing, I don't think there's enough material there. I don't know what I have that blue material for, but pretty much this, I might have enough there to make a bag or something, but that's about it. So, all right. So now that I've got it done on the inside, I can go and seam these two, and then I'll be right back. After I do those two seams, the only thing left to do is serge it and hem it. Um, and decide if I'm going to put a little piece of elastic in it to kind of keep it snug over the bottom. I'll let you know here as soon as I get those two sides done. Okay, so I've got all my sides after my little faux paws and oopses. I've got it covered. Um, I do think that I have enough that I am going to put a little bit of elastic, just a really small elastic, just enough so it covers it down. And then I do have to still stuff this. So pretty much I'm going to measure from this seam down, mark it, hem, and then make a little casing and put elastic in it. I'll come back and show you that when I get it done. All right, guys, so I am running late. I've got some an appointment and this is basically what it's going to look like it's going to be squished down um for whatever reason i only had this really thin elastic so i'm doubling it remember i'm kind of on a budget here um and then once i do that will pull over and these and i have this kind of puppy i don't know how thick i'll make it let me see if i can um i don't know how thick i'll make it but once the elastic goes down and pulls over, it will basically look like that. So, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Like I said, I do have to kind of, I just want to give you guys an idea of what it's going to look like. Um, I'm going to run it, finish running the elastic and kind of situate it and pat it down. This one doesn't have hardly any. This one's got too much. Um, so, and then when I get it all together, I will put a picture in of what my new footstool looks like. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I had my little uh, in previous engagement that I had to do. Um, and I just wanted to show you guys. Check this out. Now, honestly, it probably needs batting around the sides. But number one, I don't have children that are gonna hit this and hurt, ooh, and move the whole table. Um, I don't have children that are hit themselves, hurt it on it. Uh, it is simply because I want to put my feet up sometimes and I don't want to put them on the couch because then when I lay across the couch, the dogs are up on me. So I took my old, uh, crate that I found in the garage and some material that I don't know where it's from or what I made with it. It is blue. It does not match anything. But I have a footstool. So, um, and you know, honestly, it's sturdy enough. I probably could sit on it if I wanted to, but it's awfully low to the ground. <laughs> but it looks great. And again, doesn't go with the red couch, doesn't really go with anything. But I used everything from my stash. So, from the polyfill to the thread to the crate to the fabric, even the zipper. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. And it's a little footstool and 
I'm really happy with it, and I think that's pretty much all that matters. Um, if I had it do over again, money was no object. I wasn't living on a shoestring budget at the minute. Um, I probably would wrap the entire thing with bedding, or with bedding, with batting. I would do a pillow form on the top, and it would definitely be a different color. But hey, I really like it. So I am happy. Just saying. Thanks for watching. Bye.